Pakistan, officially the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, is a country in South Asia. It is the world's fifth most populous country, with a population of almost 227 million, and has the world's second largest Muslim population. Pakistan is the 33rd largest country by area, spanning 881,913 square kilometers. It has a 1,046-kilometer coastline along the Arabian Sea and Gulf of Oman in the south, and is bordered by India to the east, Afghanistan to the west, Iran to the southwest, and China to the northeast. It is separated narrowly from Tajikistan by Afghanistan's Waikan Corridor in the north, and also shares a maritime border with Oman. Pakistan is the site of several ancient cultures, including the 8,500-year-old Neolithic site of Meghra in Balochistan, and the Indus Valley Civilization of the Bronze Age, the most extensive of the civilizations of the Old World. The region that comprises the modern state of Pakistan was the realm of multiple empires and dynasties, including the Achaemenid, briefly that of Alexander the Great, the Seleucid, the Maurya, the Kushan, the Gupta, the Umoe Caliphate in its southern regions, the Hindu Shahi, the Ghaznavids, the Delhi Sultanate, the Mughals, the Dorainis, the Sikh Empire, British East India Company rule, and most recently, the British Indian Empire from 1858 to 1947. Spurred by the Pakistan movement, which sought a homeland for the Muslims of British India, and election victories in 1946 by the All India Muslim League, Pakistan gained independence in 1947 after the partition of the British Indian Empire, which awarded separate statehood to its Muslim majority regions and was accompanied by an unparalleled mass migration and loss of life. Initially a dominion of the British Commonwealth, Pakistan officially drafted its constitution in 1956, and emerged as a declared Islamic Republic. In 1971, the exclave of East Pakistan seceded as the new country of Bangladesh after a nine-month-long civil war. In the following four decades, Pakistan has been ruled by governments whose descriptions, although complex, commonly alternated between civilian and military, democratic and authoritarian, relatively secular and Islamist. Pakistan elected a civilian government in 2008, and in 2010 adopted a parliamentary system with periodic elections. Pakistan is a regional and middle power nation, and has the world's sixth largest standing armed forces. It is a declared nuclear weapons state, and is ranked amongst the emerging and growth leading economies, with a large and rapidly growing middle class. Pakistan's political history since independence has been characterized by periods of significant economic and military growth as well as those of political and economic instability. It is an ethnically and linguistically diverse country, with similarly diverse geography and wildlife. However, the country continues to face challenges, including poverty, illiteracy, corruption and terrorism. Pakistan is a member of the United Nations, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, the Commonwealth of Nations, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, and the Islamic Military Counterterrorism Coalition, and is designated as a major non-NATO ally by the United States. Chapter 1 Etymology the name Pakistan means literally a land abounding in the pure or a land in which the pure abound, in Urdu and Persian. It references the word, meaning pure in Persian and Pashto. The suffix is from Persian, and means a place abounding in or a place where anything abounds. The name of the country was coined in 1933 by Chaudhry Ramit Ali, a Pakistan movement activist, who published it in a pamphlet Now or Never, using it as an acronym, and referring to the names of the five northern regions of the British Raj, Punjab, Afghania, Kashmir, Sindh, and Baluchistan. Chapter 2 – History Chapter 2 – Section 1 – Early and Medieval Age Some of the earliest ancient human civilizations in South Asia originated from areas encompassing present-day Pakistan. The earliest known inhabitants in the region were Sonian during the Lower Paleolithic, of whom stone tools have been found in the Swan Valley of Punjab. The Indus region, which covers most of present-day Pakistan, 
was the site of several successive ancient cultures including the Neolithic Magra and the Bronze Age Indus Valley Civilization at Harappa and Mohenjo-daro. The Vedic period was characterized by an Indo-Aryan culture, during this period the Vedas, the oldest scriptures associated with Hinduism, were composed, and this culture later became well established in the region. Multan was an important Hindu pilgrimage center. The Vedic civilization flourished in the ancient Gandharan city of Tuxasila, now Tuxila in the Punjab, which was founded around 1000 BCE. Successive ancient empires and kingdoms ruled the region, the Persian Achaemenid Empire, Alexander the Great's Empire in 326 BCE and the Maurya Empire, founded by Chandragupta Maurya, and extended by Ashoka the Great, until 185 BCE. The Indo-Greek kingdom founded by Demetrius of Bactria included Gandhara and Punjab and reached its greatest extent under Menander, prospering the Greco-Buddhist culture in the region. Tuxila had one of the earliest universities and centers of higher education in the world, which was established during the late Vedic period in 6th century BCE. The school consisted of several monasteries without large dormitories or lecture halls where the religious instruction was provided on an individualistic basis. The ancient university was documented by the invading forces of Alexander the Great and was also recorded by Chinese pilgrims in the 4th or 5th century CE. At its zenith, the Rai dynasty of Sindh ruled this region and the surrounding territories. The Pala dynasty was the last Buddhist empire, which, under Dharmapala and Devapala, stretched across South Asia from what is now Bangladesh through northern India to Pakistan. Chapter 2 Section 2 – Islamic Conquest The Arab conqueror Muhammad bin Qasim conquered Sindh in 711 CE. The Pakistan government's official chronology claims this as the time when the foundation of Pakistan was laid but the concept of Pakistan arrived in the 19th century. The early medieval period witnessed the spread of Islam in the region. During this period, Sufi missionaries played a pivotal role in converting a majority of the regional Buddhist and Hindu population to Islam. Upon the defeat of the Turk and Hindu Shahi dynasties which governed the Kabul Valley, Yandara, and western Punjab in the 7th to 11th centuries CE, several successive Muslim empires ruled over the region, including the Ghaznavid Empire, the Grid Kingdom, and the Delhi Sultanate. The Lodi dynasty, the last of the Delhi Sultanate, was replaced by the Mughal Empire. The Mughals introduced Persian literature and high culture, establishing the roots of Indo-Persian culture in the region. In the region of modern-day Pakistan, Key cities during the Mughal period were Lahore and Thatta, both of which were chosen as the site of impressive Mughal buildings. In the early 16th century, the region remained under the Mughal Empire. In the 18th century, the slow disintegration of the Mughal Empire was hastened by the emergence of the rival powers of the Maratha Confederacy and later the Sikh Empire, as well as invasions by Nader Shah from Iran in 1739 and the Durrani Empire of Afghanistan in 1759. The growing political power of the British in Bengal had not yet reached the territories of modern Pakistan. Chapter 2 Section 3 – Colonial Period None of the territory of modern Pakistan was ruled by the British, or other European powers, until 1839, when Karachi, then a small fishing village with a mud fort guarding the harbour, was taken, and held as an enclave with a port and military base for the first Afghan war that soon followed. The rest of Sindh was taken in 1843, and in the following decades, first the East India Company, and then after the post sepoy mutiny direct rule of Queen Victoria of the British Empire, took over most of the country partly through wars, and also treaties. The main wars were that against the Balak Talpur dynasty, ended by the Battle of Miani in Sindh the Anglo-Sikh Wars and the Anglo-Afghan Wars. By 1893, all modern Pakistan was part of the British Indian Empire, and remained so until independence in 1947. Under the British, modern Pakistan was mostly divided into the Zind Division, Punjab Province, and the Baluchistan Agency. There were various princely states, of which the largest was Bahawalpur. 
A rebellion in 1857 called the Sepoy Mutiny of Bengal was the region's major armed struggle against the British. Divergence in the relationship between Hinduism and Islam created a major rift in British India that led to motivated religious violence in British India. The language controversy further escalated the tensions between Hindus and Muslims. The Hindu Renaissance witnessed an awakening of intellectualism in traditional Hinduism, and saw the emergence of more assertive influence in the social and political spheres in British India. A Muslim intellectual movement, founded by Sir Syed Ahmed Khan to counter the Hindu Renaissance, envisioned, as well as advocated for the two-nation theory, and led to the creation of the All India Muslim League in 1906. In contrast to the Indian National Congress's anti-British efforts, the Muslim League was a pro-British movement whose political program inherited the British values that would shape Pakistan's future civil society. The largely non-violent independence struggle led by the Indian Congress engaged millions of protesters in mass campaigns of civil disobedience in the 1920s and 1930s against the British Empire. The Muslim League slowly rose to mass popularity in the 1930s amid fears of underrepresentation and neglect by the British of the Indian Muslims in politics. In his presidential address of the 29th of December 1930, Alama Iqbal called for the amalgamation of Northwest Muslim majority Indian states consisting of Punjab, Northwest Frontier Province, Zind, and Baluchistan. The perceived neglect of Muslim interests by Congress led British provincial governments during the period of 1937 39 convinced Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan, to espouse the two nation theory and that led the Muslim League to adopt the Lahore Resolution of 1940 presented by Sher e Bangla A.K. Fuzlul Haq, popularly known as the Pakistan Resolution. In World War II, Jinnah and British educated founding fathers in the Muslim League supported the United Kingdom's war efforts, countering opposition against it whilst working towards Sir Syed's vision. Chapter 2 Section 4 Pakistan Movement the 1946 elections resulted in the Muslim League winning 90% of the seats reserved for Muslims. Thus, the 1946 election was effectively a plebiscite in which the Indian Muslims were to vote on the creation of Pakistan, a plebiscite won by the Muslim League. This victory was assisted by the support given to the Muslim League by the support of the landowners of Sindh and Punjab. The Indian National Congress, which initially denied the Muslim League's claim of being the sole representative of Indian Muslims, was now forced to recognize the fact. The British had no alternative except to take Jinnah's views into account as he had emerged as the sole spokesperson of the entirety of British India's Muslims. However, the British did not want colonial India to be partitioned, and in one last effort to prevent it, they devised the cabinet mission plan. As the cabinet mission failed, the British government announced its intention to end the British rule in 1946-47. Nationalists in British India, including Jawaharlal Nehru and Abul Kalam Azad of Congress, Jinnah of the All India Muslim League, and Master Tara Singh representing the Sikhs, agreed to the proposed terms of transfer of power and independence in June 1947 with the Viceroy of India, Lord Mountbatten of Burma. As the United Kingdom agreed to the partitioning of India in 1947, the modern state of Pakistan was established on 14 August 1947, amalgamating the Muslim-majority eastern and northwestern regions of British India. It comprised the provinces of Balochistan, East Bengal, the Northwest Frontier Province, West Punjab, and Sindh. In the riots that accompanied the partition in Punjab province, it is believed that between 200,000 and 2 million people were killed in what some have described as a retributive genocide between the religions while 50,000 Muslim women were abducted and raped by Hindu and Sikh men, 33,000 Hindu and Sikh women also experienced the same fate at the hands of Muslims. Around 6.5 million Muslims moved from India to West Pakistan and 4.7 million Hindus and Sikhs moved from West Pakistan to India. It was the largest mass migration in human history. A subsequent dispute over the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir eventually sparked the Indo-Pakistani War of 1947-1948. Chapter 2 Section 5, 
Independence and Modern Pakistan. After independence in 1947, Jinnah, the president of the Muslim League, became the nation's first governor-general as well as the first president-speaker of the parliament, but he died of tuberculosis on the 11th of September 1948. Meanwhile, Pakistan's founding fathers agreed to appoint Liaquat Ali Khan, the secretary-general of the party, the nation's first prime minister. From 1947 to 1956, Pakistan was a monarchy within the Commonwealth of Nations, and had two monarchs before it became a republic. The creation of Pakistan was never fully accepted by many British leaders, among them Lord Mountbatten. Mountbatten clearly expressed his lack of support and faith in the Muslim League's idea of Pakistan. Jinnah refused Mountbatten's offer to serve as Governor-General of Pakistan. When Mountbatten was asked by Collins and Lapierre if he would have sabotaged Pakistan had he known that Jinnah was dying of tuberculosis, he replied most probably apostrophe. Malana Shabir Ahmad Osmani, a respected Diobandi Olim who occupied the position of Sheikh al-Islam in Pakistan in 1949, and Malana Mordudi of Jimot i Islami played a pivotal role in the demand for an Islamic constitution. Mordudi demanded that the Constituent Assembly make an explicit declaration affirming the supreme sovereignty of God, and the supremacy of the Sharia in Pakistan. A significant result of the efforts of the Jamaat-i Islami and the ulama was the passage of the Objectives Resolution in March 1949. The Objectives Resolution, which Liaquat Ali Khan called the second most important step in Pakistan's history, declared that sovereignty over the entire universe belongs to God Almighty alone and the authority which he has delegated to the state of Pakistan through its people for being exercised within the limits prescribed by him is a sacred trust. The Objectives Resolution has been incorporated as a preamble to the constitutions of 1956, 1962, and 1973. Democracy was stalled by the martial law that had been enforced by President Askander Mirza, who was replaced by the army chief, General Ayub Khan. After adopting a presidential system in 1962, the country experienced exceptional growth until a second war with India, in 1965 that led to an economic downturn and wide-scale public disapproval in 1967. Consolidating control from Ayub Khan in 1969, President Yahya Khan had to deal with a devastating cyclone that caused 500,000 deaths in East Pakistan. In 1970 Pakistan held its first democratic elections since independence, meant to mark a transition from military rule to democracy, but after the East Pakistani Awami League won against the Pakistan People's Party, Yahya Khan and the military establishment refused to hand over power. Operation Searchlight, a military crackdown on the Bengali nationalist movement, led to a declaration of independence and the waging of a war of liberation by the Bengali Mukti Bahini forces in East Pakistan, which in West Pakistan was described as a civil war as opposed to a war of liberation. Independent researchers estimate that between 300,000 and 500,000 civilians died during this period, while the Bangladesh government puts the number of dead at 3 million a figure that is now nearly universally regarded as excessively inflated. Some academics such as Rudolf Rommel and Runak Jahan say both sides committed genocide, others such as Richard Sisson and Leo E. Rose believe there was no genocide. In response to India's support for the insurgency in East Pakistan, preemptive strikes on India by Pakistan's Air Force, Navy, and Marines sparked a conventional war in 1971 that resulted in an Indian victory and East Pakistan gaining independence as Bangladesh. With Pakistan surrendering in the war, Yahya Khan was replaced by Zulfikar Ali Bhutto as president. The country worked towards promulgating its constitution and putting the country on the road to democracy. Democratic rule resumed from 1972 to 1977, an era of self consciousness, intellectual leftism, nationalism and nationwide reconstruction. In 1972 Pakistan embarked on an ambitious plan to develop its nuclear deterrence capability with the goal of preventing any foreign invasion, the country's first nuclear power plant was inaugurated in that same year. Accelerated in response to India's first nuclear test in 1974, this crash program was completed in 1979. Democracy ended with a military coup in 1977 against the leftist PPP 
which saw General Zia ul Ha become the president in 1978. From 1977 to 1988, President Zia's corporatization and economic Islamization initiatives led to Pakistan becoming one of the fastest growing economies in South Asia. While building up the country's nuclear program, increasing Islamization, and the rise of a homegrown conservative philosophy, Pakistan helped subsidize and distribute U.S. resources to factions of the Mujahideen against the USSR's intervention in communist Afghanistan. Pakistan's northwest frontier province became a base for the anti-Soviet Afghan fighters, with the province's influential Diobandi ulama playing a significant role in encouraging and organizing the, the Jihan apostrophe. President Zia died in a plane crash in 1988, and Benazir Bhutto, daughter of Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, was elected as the country's first female prime minister. The PPP was followed by Conservative Pakistan Muslim League, and over the next decade the leaders of the two parties fought for power, alternating in office while the country's situation worsened, economic indicators fell sharply, in contrast to the 1980s. This period is marked by prolonged stagflation, instability, corruption, nationalism, geopolitical rivalry with India, and the clash of left-wing right-wing ideologies. As PML secured a supermajority in elections in 1997, Sharif authorized nuclear testings, as a retaliation to the second nuclear tests ordered by India, led by Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee in May 1998. Military tension between the two countries in the Kargil district led to the Kargil War of 1999, and turmoil in civic-military relations allowed General Pervez Musharraf to take over through a bloodless coup d'etat. Musharraf governed Pakistan as chief executive from 1999 to 2001 and as president from 2001 to 2008, a period of enlightenment, social liberalism, extensive economic reforms, and direct involvement in the U.S.-led war on terrorism. When the National Assembly historically completed its first full five-year term on 15 November 2007, the new elections were called by the Election Commission. After the assassination of Benazir Bhutto in 2007, the PPP secured the most votes in the elections of 2008, appointing party member Yusuf Raza Giloni as Prime Minister. Threatened with impeachment, President Musharraf resigned on 18 August 2008, and was succeeded by Asif Ali Zardari. Clashes with the judicature prompted Giloni's disqualification from the parliament, and as the prime minister in June 2012. By its own financial calculations, Pakistan's involvement in the war on terrorism has cost up to $118 billion, 60,000 casualties and more than 1.8 million displaced civilians. The general election held in 2013 saw the PML almost achieve a supermajority, following which Nawaz Sharif was elected as the Prime Minister, returning to the post for the third time in 14 years, in a democratic transition. In 2018, Imran Khan won the 2018 Pakistan general election with 116 general seats and became the 22nd Prime Minister of Pakistan in election of National Assembly of Pakistan for Prime Minister by getting 176 votes against Shabazz Sharif, who got 96 votes. Chapter 3 Role of Islam Pakistan is the only country to have been created in the name of Islam. The idea of Pakistan, which had received overwhelming popular support among Indian Muslims, especially those in the provinces of British India where Muslims were in a minority such as the United Provinces, was articulated in terms of an Islamic state by the Muslim League leadership, the Ulama and Jinnah. Jinnah had developed a close association with the ulama and upon his death was described by one such olim, Maulana Shabir Ahmad Osmani, as the greatest Muslim after Aurangzeb and as someone who desired to unite the Muslims of the world under the banner of Islam. The Objectives Resolution in March 1949, which declared God as the sole sovereign over the entire universe, represented the first formal step to transform Pakistan into an Islamic state. Muslim League leader Chowdhury Khaliqsaman asserted that Pakistan could only truly become an Islamic state after bringing all believers of Islam into a single political unit. Keith Callard, one of the earliest scholars on Pakistani politics, 
observed that Pakistanis believed in the essential unity of purpose and outlook in the Muslim world and assumed that Muslim from other countries would share their views on the relationship between religion and nationality. However, Pakistan's pan-Islamist sentiments for a united Islamic bloc called Islamistan were not shared by other Muslim governments, although Islamists such as the Grand Mufti of Palestine, al haj Amin al-Husseini, and leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood, became drawn to the country. Pakistan's desire for an international organization of Muslim countries was fulfilled in the 1970s when the Organization of Islamic Conference was formed. The strongest opposition to the Islamist ideological paradigm being imposed on the state came from the Bengali Muslims of East Pakistan whose educated class, according to a survey by social scientist Naseem Ahmad Jord, preferred secularism and focused on ethnic identity unlike educated West Pakistanis who tended to prefer an Islamic identity. The Islamist party Jamaat-e-Islami considered Pakistan to be an Islamic state, and believed Bengali nationalism to be unacceptable. In the 1971 conflict over East Pakistan, the Jamaat-e-Islami fought the Bengali nationalists on the Pakistan armies, side. After Pakistan's first ever general elections, the 1973 constitution was created by an elected parliament. The constitution declared Pakistan an Islamic Republic and Islam as the state religion. It also stated that all laws would have to be brought into accordance with the injunctions of Islam as laid down in the Quran and Sunnah and that no law repugnant to such injunctions could be enacted. The 1973 constitution also created certain institutions such as the Shariat Court and the Council of Islamic Ideology to channel the interpretation and application of Islam. Pakistan's leftist Prime Minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto faced vigorous opposition which coalesced into a movement united under the revivalist banner of Nizam-e-Mustafa which aimed to establish an Islamic state based on Sharia laws. Bhutto agreed to some Islamist demands before being overthrown in a coup. In 1977, after taking power from Bhutto in a coup d'etat, General Zia ul Ha, who came from a religious background, committed himself to establishing an Islamic state and enforcing Sharia law. Zia established separate Shariat judicial courts and court benches to judge legal cases using Islamic doctrine. Zia bolstered the influence of the ulama and the Islamic parties. Zia ul Ha forged a strong alliance between the military, and Diobandi institutions and even though most Baalvi ulama and only a few Diobandi scholars had supported Pakistan's creation, Islamic state politics came to be mostly in favor of Diobandi institutions instead of Baalvi. Sectarian tensions increased with Zia's anti-Shia policies. According to a Pew Research Center opinion poll, a majority of Pakistanis support making Sharia the official law of the land. In a survey of several Muslim countries, Pew also found that Pakistanis tend to identify with their religion more than their nationality in contrast to Muslims in other nations such as Egypt, Indonesia, and Jordan. Chapter 4, Geography, Environment, and Climate The geography and climate of Pakistan are extremely diverse, and the country is home to a wide variety of wildlife. Pakistan covers an area of 881,913 square kilometers, approximately equal to the combined land areas of France and the United Kingdom. It is the 33rd largest nation by total area, although this ranking varies depending on how the disputed territory of Kashmir is counted. Pakistan has a 1,046 km coastline along the Arabian Sea and the Gulf of Oman in the south and land borders of 6,774 km in total, 2,430 km with Afghanistan, 523 km with China, 2,912 km with India, and 909 km with Iran. It shares a marine border with Oman, and is separated from Tajikistan by the cold, narrow Waikan Corridor. Pakistan occupies a geopolitically important location at the crossroads of South Asia, the Middle East, and Central Asia. Geologically, Pakistan is located in the Indus Sangpo Sucha zone and overlaps the Indian tectonic plate in its Sindh and Punjab provinces. Balochistan and most of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa are within the Eurasian plate, mainly on the Iranian plateau. 
Gilgit Baltistan and Azad Kashmir lie along the edge of the Indian plate and hence are prone to violent earthquakes. This region has the highest rates of seismicity and the largest earthquakes in the Himalaya region. Ranging from the coastal areas of the south to the glaciated mountains of the north, Pakistan's landscapes vary from plains to deserts, forests, hills, and plateaus. Pakistan is divided into three major geographic areas the Northern Highlands, the Indus River Plain, and the Balochistan Plateau. The Northern Highlands contain the Karakoram, Hindu Kush, and Pamir mountain ranges, which contain some of the world's highest peaks, including five of the 14 8000ers, which attract adventurers and mountaineers from all over the world, notably K2 and Nanga Parbat. The Balochistan Plateau lies in the west and the Tar Desert in the east. The 1,609 km Indus River and its tributaries flow through the country from the Kashmir region to the Arabian Sea. There is an expanse of alluvial plains along it in the Punjab and Sindh. The climate varies from tropical to temperate, with arid conditions in the coastal south. There is a monsoon season with frequent flooding due to heavy rainfall, and a dry season with significantly less rainfall or none at all. There are four distinct seasons in Pakistan, a cool, dry winter from December through February, a hot, dry spring from March through May, the summer rainy season, or southwest monsoon period, from June through September, and the retreating monsoon period of October and November. Rainfall varies greatly from year to year, and patterns of alternate flooding and drought are common. Chapter 4 Section 1 Flora and Fauna the diversity of the landscape and climate in Pakistan allows a wide variety of trees and plants to flourish. The forests range from coniferous alpine and, and subalpine trees such as spruce, pine, and deodocida in the extreme northern mountains to deciduous trees in most of the country, to palms such as coconut and date in the southern Punjab, southern Balochistan, and all of Sindh. The western hills are home to juniper, tamarisk, coarse grasses, and scrub plants. Mangrove forests form much of the coastal wetlands along the coast in the south. Coniferous forests are found at altitudes ranging from 1,000 to 4,000 meters in most of the northern and northwestern highlands. In the Zeric regions of Balochistan, date palm and ephedra are common. In most of the Punjab and Sindh, the Indus Plains support tropical and subtropical dry and moist broadleaf forest as well as tropical and xeric shrublands. These forests are mostly of mulberry, acacia, and eucalyptus. About 2.2% or 1,687,000 hectares of Pakistan was forested in 2000 and then dot the fauna of Pakistan also reflects the country's varied climate. Around 668 bird species are found there, including crows, sparrows, miners, hawks, falcons, and eagles. Palace, Kohistan, has a significant population of western tragopan. Many birds sighted in Pakistan are migratory, coming from Europe, Central Asia, and India. The southern plains are home to mongooses, small Indian civet, hares, the Asiatic jackal the Indian pangolin, the jungle cat, and the desert cat. There are mugger crocodiles in the Indus, and wild boar, deer, porcupines, and small rodents in the surrounding areas. The sandy scrublands of central Pakistan are home to Asiatic jackals, striped hyenas, wildcats, and leopards. The lack of vegetative cover, the severe climate, and the impact of grazing on the deserts have left wild animals in a precarious position. The chinkara is the only animal that can still be found in significant numbers in Khalistan. A small number of Nilgai are found along the Pakistan-India border and in some parts of Khalistan. A wide variety of animals live in the mountainous north, including the Marco Polo sheep, the Uriel, the Marco goat, the Ibex goat, the Asian black bear, and the Himalayan brown bear. Among the rare animals found in the area are the snow leopard and the blind Indus river dolphin, of which there are believed to be about 1,100 remaining, protected at the Indus river dolphin reserve in Sindh. In total, 174 mammals, 
177 reptiles, 22 amphibians, 198 freshwater fish species and 5,000 species of invertebrates have been recorded in Pakistan. The flora and fauna of Pakistan suffer from a number of problems. Pakistan has the second highest rate of deforestation in the world, which, along with hunting and pollution, has had adverse effects on the ecosystem. It had a 2019 Forest Landscape Integrity Index mean score of 7. 42 tenths, ranking it 41st globally out of 172 countries. The government has established a large number of protected areas, wildlife sanctuaries, and game reserves to address these issues. Chapter 5, Government and Politics Pakistan's political experience is essentially related to the struggle of Indian Muslims to regain the power they lost to British colonization. Pakistan is a democratic parliamentary federal republic, with Islam as the state religion. The first constitution was adopted in 1956 but suspended by Ayub Khan in 1958, who replaced it with the second constitution in 1962. A complete and comprehensive constitution was adopted in 1973, it was suspended by Zia-ul-Ha in 1977 but reinstated in 1985. This constitution is the country's most important document, laying the foundations of the current government. The Pakistani military establishment, has played an influential role in mainstream politics throughout Pakistan's political history. The periods 1958-1971, 1977-1988, and 1999-2008 saw military coups that resulted in the imposition of martial law and military commanders who governed as de facto presidents. Today Pakistan has a multi-party parliamentary system with clear division of powers and checks and balances among the branches of government. The first successful democratic transition occurred in May 2013. Politics in Pakistan is centered on, and dominated by, a homegrown social philosophy comprising a blend of ideas from socialism, conservatism, and the third way. As of the general elections held in 2013, the three main political parties in the country are, the center-right conservative Pakistan Muslim League N, the center-left socialist PPP, and the centrist and third-way Pakistan Movement for Justice. Head of State, the President, who is elected by an electoral college is the ceremonial head of the state and is the civilian commander-in-chief of the Pakistan Armed Forces, but military appointments and key confirmations in the armed forces are made by the Prime Minister after reviewing the reports on candidates' merit and performance. Almost all appointed officers in the judicature, military, the chairman joint chiefs, joint staff, and legislature require the executive confirmation from the Prime Minister, whom the President must consult by law. However, the powers to pardon and grant clemency lie with the President of Pakistan. Legislative, the bicameral legislature comprises a 104-member Senate and a 342-member National Assembly. Members of the National Assembly are elected through the first-past-the-post system under universal adult suffrage, representing electoral districts known as National Assembly constituencies. According to the Constitution, the 70 seats reserved for women and religious minorities are allocated to the political parties according to their proportional representation. Senate members are elected by provincial legislators, with all the provinces having equal representation. Executive, the Prime Minister is usually the leader of the majority rule party, or a coalition in the National Assembly, the lower house. The Prime Minister serves as the head of government and is designated to exercise as the country's chief executive. The Prime Minister is responsible for appointing a cabinet consisting of ministers and advisers as well as running the government operations, taking and authorizing executive decisions, appointments and recommendations of senior civil servants that require executive confirmation of the Prime Minister. Provincial Governments each of the four provinces has a similar system of government, with a directly elected provincial assembly in which the leader of the largest party or coalition is elected chief minister. Chief ministers oversee the provincial governments, and head the provincial cabinet. It is common in Pakistan to have different ruling parties or coalitions in each of the provinces. The provincial bureaucracy is headed by the chief secretary, 
who is appointed by the Prime Minister. The provincial assemblies have power to make laws and approve the provincial budget which is commonly presented by the provincial finance minister every fiscal year. Provincial governors who are the ceremonial heads of the provinces are appointed by the president. Judicature, the judiciary of Pakistan is a hierarchical system with two classes of courts, the superior judiciary and the subordinate judiciary. The Chief Justice of Pakistan is the chief judge who oversees the judicature's court system at all levels of command. The superior judiciary is composed of the Supreme Court of Pakistan, the Federal Shariat Court and five high courts, with the Supreme Court at the apex. The Constitution of Pakistan entrusts the superior judiciary with the obligation to preserve, protect and defend the Constitution. Other regions of Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan have separate court systems. Chapter 5 Section 1 Foreign Relations Since independence, Pakistan has attempted to balance its relations with foreign nations. Pakistan is a strong ally of China, with both countries placing considerable importance on the maintenance of an extremely close and supportive special relationship. It has also been a major non-NATO ally of the United States ever since the war against terrorism, a status achieved in 2004. Pakistan's foreign policy and geostrategy mainly focus on the economy and security against threats to its national identity and territorial integrity, and on the cultivation of close relations with other Muslim countries. The Kashmir conflict remains the major point of contention between Pakistan and India. Three of their four wars were fought over this territory. Due partly to difficulties in relations with its geopolitical rival India, Pakistan maintains close political relations with Turkey and Iran, and both countries have been a focal point in Pakistan's foreign policy. Saudi Arabia also maintains a respected position in Pakistan's foreign policy. A non-signatory party of the Treaty on Nuclear Non-Proliferation, Pakistan is an influential member of the IAEA. In recent events, Pakistan has blocked an international treaty to limit fissile material, arguing that the treaty would target Pakistan specifically. In the 20th century, Pakistan's nuclear deterrence program focused on countering India's nuclear ambitions in the region, and nuclear tests by India eventually led Pakistan to reciprocate to maintain a geopolitical balance as becoming a nuclear power. Currently, Pakistan maintains a policy of credible minimum deterrence, calling its program Vital Nuclear Deterrence Against Foreign Aggression. Located in the strategic and geopolitical corridor of the world's major maritime oil supply lines and communication fiber optics, Pakistan has proximity to the natural resources of Central Asian countries. Briefing on the country's foreign policy in 2004, a Pakistani senator reportedly explained, Pakistan highlights sovereign equality of states, bilateralism, mutuality of interests, and non-interference in each other's domestic affairs as the cardinal features of its foreign policy. Pakistan is an active member of the United Nations and has a permanent representative to represent Pakistan's positions in international politics. Pakistan has lobbied for the concept of enlightened moderation in the Muslim world. Pakistan is also a member of Commonwealth of Nations, the South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, the Economic Cooperation Organization, and the G20 Developing Nations. Due to ideological differences, Pakistan opposed the Soviet Union in the 1950s. During the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s, Pakistan was one of the closest allies of the United States. Relations between Pakistan and Russia have greatly improved, since 1999, and cooperation in various sectors has increased. Pakistan has had an on and off relationship with the United States. A close ally of the United States during the Cold War, Pakistan's relationship with the U.S. soured in the 1990s when the latter imposed sanctions because of Pakistan's secretive nuclear development. Since 9-11, Pakistan has been a close ally of the U.S. on the issue of counterterrorism in the regions of the Middle East and South Asia, with the U.S. supporting Pakistan with aid money and weapons. Initially, the U.S.-led war on terrorism led to an improvement in the relationship, 
but it was strained by a divergence of interests and resulting mistrust during the war in Afghanistan and by issues related to terrorism. The Pakistani intelligence agency, the IC, was accused of supporting Taliban insurgents in Afghanistan. Pakistan does not have diplomatic relations with Israel, nonetheless, some Israeli citizens have visited the country on tourist visas. However, an exchange took place between the two countries using Turkey as a communication conduit. Despite Pakistan being the only country in the world that has not established diplomatic relations with Armenia, an Armenian community still resides in Pakistan. Pakistan had warm relations with Bangladesh, despite some initial strains in their relationship. Chapter 5 Section 1 Subsection 2 Relations with China Pakistan was one of the first countries to establish formal diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China, and the relationship continues to be strong since China's war with India in 1962, forming a special relationship. From the 1960s to 1980s, Pakistan greatly helped China in reaching out to the world's major countries and helped facilitate U.S. President Richard Nixon's state visit to China. Despite the change of governments in Pakistan and fluctuations in the regional and global situation, China's policy in Pakistan continues to be a dominant factor at all times. In return, China is Pakistan's largest trading partner, and economic cooperation has flourished, with substantial Chinese investment in Pakistan's infrastructural expansion such as the Pakistani deport port at Gwadar. Friendly Sino-Pakistani relations reached new heights as both countries signed 51 agreements and memorandums of understanding in 2015 for cooperation in different areas. Both countries signed a free trade agreement in the 2000s, and Pakistan continues to serve as China's communication bridge to the Muslim world. In 2016, China announced that it will set up an anti-terrorism alliance with Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Tajikistan. In December 2018, Pakistan's government defended China's re-education camps for a million Uyghur Muslims. Chapter 5 Section 1 Subsection 3 Emphasis on Relations with Muslim World After independence, Pakistan vigorously pursued bilateral relations with other Muslim countries and made an active bid for leadership of the Muslim world, or at least for leadership in efforts to achieve unity. The Ali brothers had sought to project Pakistan as the natural leader of the Islamic world, in part due to its large manpower and military strength. A top-ranking Muslim League leader, Khalik Zaman, declared that Pakistan would bring together all Muslim countries into Islamistan, a pan-Islamic entity. Such developments did not get American approval, and British Prime Minister Clement Attlee voiced international opinion at the time by stating that he wished that India and Pakistan would reunite. Since most of the Arab world was undergoing a nationalist awakening at the time, there was little attraction to Pakistan's pan-Islamic aspirations. Some of the Arab countries saw the Islamistan project as a Pakistani attempt to dominate other Muslim states. Pakistan vigorously championed the right of self-determination for Muslims around the world. Pakistan's efforts for the independence movements of Indonesia, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, and Eritrea were significant and initially led to close ties between these countries and Pakistan. However, Pakistan also masterminded an attack on the Afghan city of Jalalabad during the Afghan civil war to establish an Islamic government there. Pakistan had wished to foment an Islamic revolution that would transcend national borders, covering Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Central Asia. On the other hand, Pakistan's relations with Iran have been strained at times due to sectarian tensions. Iran and Saudi Arabia used Pakistan as a battleground for their proxy sectarian war, and by the 1990s Pakistan's support for the Sunni Taliban organization in Afghanistan became a problem for Shia Iran, which opposed a Taliban-controlled Afghanistan. Tensions between Iran and Pakistan intensified in 1998 when Iran accused Pakistan of war crimes after Pakistani warplanes had bombarded Afghanistan's last Shia stronghold in support of the Taliban. Pakistan is an influential and founding member of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Maintaining cultural, political, social, 
and economic relations with the Arab world and other countries in the Muslim world as a vital factor in Pakistan's foreign policy. Chapter 5 Section 2 Administrative Divisions A federal parliamentary republic state, Pakistan is a federation that comprises four provinces, Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Sindh, and Balochistan, and three territories, Islamabad Capital Territory, Gilgit Baltistan and Azad Kashmir. The government of Pakistan exercises the de facto jurisdiction over the frontier regions and the western parts of the Kashmir regions, which are organized into the separate political entities Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. In 2009, the constitutional assignment awarded the Gilgit Baltistan a semi provincial status, giving it self government. The local government system consists of a three tier system of districts, tzils, and union councils, with an elected body at each tier. There are about 130 districts altogether, of which Azad Kashmir has 10 and Gilgit Baltistan 7. Law enforcement is carried out by a joint network of the intelligence community with jurisdiction limited to the relevant province or territory. The National Intelligence Directorate coordinates the information intelligence at both federal and provincial levels, including the FIA, IB, Motorway Police, and paramilitary forces such as the Pakistan Rangers and the Frontier Corps. Pakistan's premier intelligence agency, the Inter Services Intelligence, was formed just within a year after the independence of Pakistan in 1947. ABC News Point in 2014 reported that the IC was ranked as the top intelligence agency in the world, while Z News reported the IC is ranking fifth among the world's most powerful intelligence agencies. The court system is organized as a hierarchy, with the Supreme Court at the apex, below which are high courts, federal Sharia courts, district courts, judicial magistrate courts, executive magistrate courts, and civil courts. The Penal Code has limited jurisdiction in the tribal areas, where law is largely derived from tribal customs. Chapter 5 Section 3 – Kashmir Conflict Kashmir, a Himalayan region situated at the northernmost point of the Indian subcontinent, was governed as an autonomous princely state known as Jammu and Kashmir in the British Raj prior to the partition of India in August 1947. Following the independence of India, and Pakistan post-partition, the region became the subject of a major territorial dispute that has hindered their bilateral relations. The two states have engaged each other in two large-scale wars over the region in 1947-1948, and 1965. India and Pakistan have also fought smaller-scale protracted conflicts over the region in 1984 and 1999. Approximately 45.1% of the Kashmir region is controlled by India, which also claims the entire territory of the former princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that is not under its control. India's control over Jammu and Kashmir and Lodak as well as its claim to the rest of the region has likewise been contested by Pakistan, which controls approximately 38.2% of the region and claims all of the territory under Indian control. Additionally, Approximately 20% of the region has been controlled by China since the Sino-Indian War of 1962 and the Sino-Pakistani Agreement of 1963. The Chinese-controlled areas of Kashmir remain subject to an Indian territorial claim, but are not claimed by Pakistan. India claims the entire Kashmir region on the basis of the Instrument of Accession, a legal agreement with the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that was executed by Hari Singh, the Maharaja of the state, who agreed to cede the entire area to newly independent India. Pakistan claims most of Kashmir on the basis of its Muslim majority population and of its geography, the same principles that were applied for the creation of the two independent states. India referred the dispute to the United Nations on 1 January 1948. In a resolution passed in 1948, the UN's General Assembly asked Pakistan to remove most of its military troops to set the conditions for the holding of a plebiscite. However, Pakistan failed to vacate the region and a ceasefire was reached in 1949 establishing a ceasefire line known as the Line of Control that divided Kashmir between the two states as a de facto border. India, 
fearful that the Muslim majority populace of Kashmir would vote to secede from India, did not allow a plebiscite to take place in the region. This was confirmed in a statement by India's Defence Minister, Krishna Menon, who stated, Kashmir would vote to join Pakistan and no Indian government responsible for agreeing to plebiscite would survive. Pakistan claims that its position is for the right of the Kashmiri people to determine their future through impartial elections as mandated by the United Nations, while India has stated that Kashmir is an integral part of India, referring to the 1972 Simla Agreement, and to the fact that regional elections take place regularly. In recent developments, certain Kashmiri independence groups believe that Kashmir should be independent of both India and Pakistan. Chapter 5 Section 4, Law Enforcement The law enforcement in Pakistan is carried out by joint network of several federal and provincial police agencies. The four provinces and the Islamabad capital territory each have a civilian police force with jurisdiction extending only to the relevant province or territory. At the federal level, there are a number of civilian intelligence agencies with nationwide jurisdictions including the Federal Investigation Agency and the Intelligence Bureau, as well as several paramilitary forces such as the National Guards, the Rangers, and the Frontier Corps. The most senior officers of all the civilian police forces also form part of the police service, which is a component of the civil service of Pakistan. Namely, there is four provincial police service including the Punjab Police, Sindh Police, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Police, and the Balochistan Police, all headed by the appointed senior inspector generals. The ICT has its own police component, the Capital Police, to maintain law and order in the capital. The SID bureaus are the crime investigation unit and form a vital part in each provincial police service. The law enforcement in Pakistan also has a motorway patrol which is responsible for enforcement of traffic and safety laws, security and recovery on Pakistan's inter-provincial motorway network. In each of provincial police service, it also maintains a respective elite police units led by the NACTA, a counter-terrorism police unit as well as providing VIP escorts. In the Punjab and Sindh, the Pakistan Rangers are an internal security force with the prime objective to provide and maintain security in war zones and areas of conflict as well as maintaining law and order which includes providing assistance to the police. The Frontier Corps serves the similar purpose in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and the Balochistan. Chapter 5 Section 5 – Human Rights Male homosexuality is illegal in Pakistan and punishable with up to life in prison. In its 2018 Press Freedom Index, Reporters Without Borders ranked Pakistan number 139 out of 180 countries based on freedom of the press. Television stations and newspapers are routinely shut down for publishing any reports critical of the government or the military. Chapter 6 – Military the armed forces of Pakistan are the sixth largest in the world in terms of numbers in full-time service, with about 651,800 personnel on active duty, and 291,000 paramilitary personnel, as of tentative estimates in 2021. They came into existence after independence in 1947, and the military establishment, has frequently influenced the national politics ever since. Chain of command of the military is kept under the control of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee, all of the branches joint works, coordination, military logistics, and joint missions are under the Joint Staff HQ. The Joint Staff HQ is composed of the Air HQ, Navy HQ, and Army GHQ in the vicinity of the Rawalpindi Military District. The Chairman Joint Chiefs of Staff Committee is the highest principal staff officer in the armed forces, and the Chief Military Advisor to the civilian government though the Chairman, has no authority over the three branches of armed forces. The Chairman Joint Chiefs controls the military from the J's HQ and maintains strategic communications between the military, and the civilian government. As of 2021, the CJCSC is General Nadim Raza alongside Chief of Army Staff General Kamar Javed Bajwa, Chief of Naval Staff Admiral Mohammad Amjad Khan Niazi, and Chief of Air Staff Air Chief Marshal Zahir Ahmad Babar. The main branches are the Army, the Air Force and the Navy, 
which are supported by a large number of paramilitary forces in the country. Control over the strategic arsenals, deployment, employment, development, military computers and command and control is a responsibility vested under the National Command Authority which oversaw the work on the nuclear policy as part of the credible minimum deterrence. The United States, Turkey, and China maintain close military relations and regularly export military equipment and technology transfer to Pakistan. Joint logistics and major war games are occasionally carried out by the militaries of China and Turkey. Philosophical basis for the military draft is introduced by the Constitution in times of emergency, but it has never been imposed. Chapter 6, Section 1, Military History Since 1947 Pakistan has been involved in four conventional wars. The first occurred in Kashmir with Pakistan gaining control of Western Kashmir, and India retaining Eastern Kashmir. Territorial problems eventually led to another conventional war in 1965. The issue of Bengali refugees led to another war in 1971 which resulted in Pakistan's unconditional surrender in East Pakistan. Tensions in Kargil brought the two countries at the brink of war. Since 1947 the unresolved territorial problems with Afghanistan saw border skirmishes which were kept mostly at the mountainous border. In 1961, the military and intelligence community repelled the Afghan incursion in the Bijawa Agency near the Durand Line border. Rising tensions with neighboring USSR in their involvement in Afghanistan, Pakistani intelligence community, mostly the IC, systematically coordinated the U.S. resources to the Afghan Mujahideen and foreign fighters against the Soviet Union's presence in the region. Military reports indicated that the PAF was in engagement with the Soviet Air Force, supported by the Afghan Air Force during the course of the conflict, one of which belonged to Alexander Rutskoy. Apart from its own conflicts, Pakistan has been an active participant in United Nations peacekeeping missions. It played a major role in rescuing trapped American soldiers from Mogadishu, Somalia, in 1993 in Operation Gothic Serpent. According to UN reports, the Pakistani military is the third largest troop contributor to UN peacekeeping missions after Ethiopia and India. Pakistan has deployed its military in some Arab countries, providing defense, training, and playing advisory roles. The PAF and Navy's fighter pilots have voluntarily served in Arab nations' militaries against Israel in the Six-Day War and in the Yom Kippur War. Pakistan's fighter pilots shot down ten Israeli planes in the Six-Day War. In the 1973 war, one of the PAF pilots, FLT. Lieutenant Sattar Alvi, shot down an Israeli Air Force Mirage and was honored by the Syrian government. Requested by the Saudi monarchy in 1979, Pakistan's special forces units, operatives, and commandos were rushed to assist Saudi forces in Mecca to lead the operation of the Grand Mosque. For almost two weeks Saudi special forces and Pakistani commandos fought the insurgents who had occupied the Grand Mosque's compound. In 1991, Pakistan became involved with the Gulf War and sent 5,000 troops as part of a U.S.-led coalition, specifically for the defense of Saudi Arabia. Despite the UN arms embargo on Bosnia, General Javed Nasir of the IC airlifted anti-tank weapons and missiles to Bosnian Mujahideen which turned the tide in favor of Bosnian Muslims and forced the Serbs to lift the siege. Under Nasir's leadership the IC was also involved in supporting Chinese Muslims in Xinjiang province, rebel Muslim groups in the Philippines, and some religious groups in Central Asia. Since 2004, the military has been engaged in an insurgency in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, mainly against the Tariq i Taliban factions. Major operations undertaken by the army include Operation Black Thunderstorm, Operation Ra e Nijat, and Operation Zav e Az. But according to Cipri, Pakistan was the ninth largest recipient and importer of arms between 2012 to 2016. Chapter 7 Economy the economy of Pakistan is the 23rd largest in the world in terms of purchasing power parity, and 42nd largest in terms of nominal gross domestic product. Economists estimate that Pakistan was part of the wealthiest region of the world throughout the first millennium CE, with the largest economy by GDP. 
This advantage was lost in the 18th century as other regions such as China and Western Europe edged forward. Pakistan is considered a developing country and is one of the next 11, a group of 11 countries that, along with the BRICS, have a high potential to become the world's largest economies in the 21st century. In recent years, after decades of social instability, as of 2013, serious deficiencies in macro-management and unbalanced macroeconomics in basic services such as rail transportation and electrical energy generation have developed. The economy is considered to be semi-industrialized, with centers of growth along the Indus River. The diversified economies of Karachi and Punjab's urban centers coexist with less developed areas in other parts of the country, particularly in Balochistan. According to the Economic Complexity Index, Pakistan is the 67th largest export economy in the world and the 106th most complex economy. During the fiscal year 2015-16, Pakistan's exports stood at 20.81 billion US dollars and imports at 44.76 billion US dollars, resulting in a negative trade balance of 23.96 billion US dollars. As of 2019, Pakistan's estimated nominal GDP is 284.2 billion US dollars. The GDP by PPP is 1.254 trillion US dollars. The estimated nominal per capita GDP is 1,388 US dollars, the GDP slash capita is 6,016 US dollars, according to the World Bank, Pakistan has important strategic endowments and development potential. The increasing proportion of Pakistan's youth provides the country with both a potential demographic dividend and a challenge to provide adequate services and employment. 21.04% of the population live below the international poverty line of one US dollar and 25 cents a day. The unemployment rate among the aged 15 and over population is 5.5%. Pakistan has an estimated 40 million middle-class citizens, projected to increase to 100 million by 2050. A 2015 report published by the World Bank ranked Pakistan's economy at 24th largest in the world by purchasing power and her 41st largest in absolute terms. It is South Asia's second largest economy, representing about 15.0% of regional GDP. Pakistan's economic growth since its inception has been varied. It has been slow during periods of democratic transition, but robust during the three periods of martial law, although the foundation for sustainable and equitable growth was not formed. The early to middle 2000s was a period of rapid economic reforms, the government raised development spending, which reduced poverty levels by 10% and increased GDP by 3%. The economy cooled again from 2007. Inflation reached 25.0% in 2008, and Pakistan had to depend on a fiscal policy backed by the International Monetary Fund to avoid possible bankruptcy. A year later, the Asian Development Bank reported that Pakistan's economic crisis was easing. The inflation rate for the fiscal year 2010-11 was 14.1%. Since 2013, as part of an international monetary fund program, Pakistan's economic growth has picked up. In 2014 Goldman Sachs predicted that Pakistan's economy would grow 15 times in the next 35 years to become the 18th largest economy in the world by 2050. In his 2016 book, The Rise and Fall of Nations, Ruchir Sharma termed Pakistan's economy as at a takeoff stage and the future outlook until 2020 has been termed very good. Sharma termed it possible to transform Pakistan from a low-income to a middle-income country during the next five years. Pakistan is one of the largest producers of natural commodities, and its labor market is the tenth largest in the world. The 7 million strong Pakistani diaspora contributed 19.9 billion US dollars to the economy in 2015-16. The major source countries of remittances to Pakistan are, the UAE, the United States, Saudi Arabia, the Gulf States Australia, Canada, Japan, the United Kingdom, Norway, and Switzerland. According to the World Trade Organization, Pakistan's share of overall world exports is declining, 
it contributed only 0.13% in 2007. Chapter 7 Section 1, Agriculture and Primary Sector The structure of the Pakistani economy has changed from a mainly agricultural to a strong service base. Agriculture as of 2015 accounts for only 20.9% of the GDP. Even so, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, Pakistan produced 21,591,400 metric tons of wheat in 2005, more than all of Africa and nearly as much as all of South America. Majority of the population, directly or indirectly, is dependent on this sector. It accounts for 43.5% of employed labor force and is the largest source of foreign exchange earnings. A large portion of the country's manufactured exports is dependent on raw materials such as cotton and hides that are part of the agriculture sector, while supply shortages and market disruptions in farm products do push up inflationary pressures. The country is also the fifth largest producer of cotton with cotton production of 14 million bales from a modest beginning of 1.7 million bales in the early 1950s, is self-sufficient in sugarcane, and is the fourth largest producer in the world of milk. Land and water resources have not risen proportionately, but the increases have taken place mainly due to gains in labor and agriculture productivity. The major breakthrough in crop production took place in the late 1960s and 1970s due to the Green Revolution, that made a significant contribution to land and yield increases of wheat and rice. Private tube wells led to a 50% increase in the cropping intensity which was augmented by tractor cultivation. While the tube wells raised crop yields by 50%, the high-yielding varieties of wheat and rice led to a 50-60% higher yield. Meat industry accounts for 1.4% of overall GDP. Chapter 7 Section 2 Industry Industry is the second largest sector of the economy, accounting for 19.74% of gross domestic product, and 24% of total employment. Large-scale manufacturing, at 12.2% of GDP, dominates the overall sector, accounting for 66% of the sectoral share, followed by small-scale manufacturing, which accounts for 4.9% of total GDP. Pakistan's cement industry is also fast-growing mainly because of demand from Afghanistan and from the domestic real estate sector. In 2013 Pakistan exported 7,708,557 metric tons of cement. Pakistan has an installed capacity of 44,768,000, 250 metric tons of cement and 42,636,428 metric tons of clinker. In 2012 and 2013, the cement industry in Pakistan became the most profitable sector of the economy. The textile industry has a pivotal position in the manufacturing sector of Pakistan. In Asia, Pakistan is the eighth largest exporter of textile products contributing 9.5% to the GDP and providing employment to around 15 million people. Pakistan is the fourth largest producer of cotton with the third largest spinning capacity in Asia after China and India, contributing 5% to the global spinning capacity. China is the second largest buyer of Pakistani textiles, importing 1.527 billion US dollars of textiles last fiscal. Unlike the US, where mostly value-added textiles are imported, China buys only cotton yarn and cotton fabric from Pakistan. In 2012, Pakistani textile products accounted for 3.3% or 1.07 billion US dollars of all UK textile imports, 12.4% or 4.61 billion dollars of total Chinese textile imports, 3.0% of all US textile imports, 1.6% of total German textile imports and 0.7% of total Indian textile imports. Chapter 7 Section 3, Services The services sector makes up 58.8% of GDP, and has emerged as the main driver of economic growth. Pakistani society like other developing countries is a consumption-oriented society, having a high marginal propensity to consume. 
The growth rate of services sector is higher than the growth rate of agriculture and industrial sector. Services sector accounts for 54% of GDP in 2014 and little over one-third of total employment. Services sector has strong linkages with other sectors of economy, it provides essential inputs to agriculture sector and manufacturing sector. Pakistan's IT sector is regarded as among the fastest growing sectors in Pakistan. The World Economic Forum, assessing the development of information and communication technology in the country ranked Pakistan 110th among 139 countries on the Network Readiness Index 2016. As of May 2020, Pakistan has about 82 million Internet users, making it the ninth largest population of Internet users in the world. The current growth rate and employment trend indicate that Pakistan's information communication technology industry will exceed the $10 billion mark by 2020. The sector employs 12,000 and counts among top five freelancing nations. The country has also improved its export performance in telecom, computer and information services, as the share of their exports surged from 8.2 PC in 2005-06 to 12.6 PC in 2012-13. This growth is much better than that of China, whose share in services exports was 3 PC and 7.7 .7 PC for the same period respectively. Chapter 7 Section 4 – Tourism With its diverse cultures, people, and landscapes, Pakistan attracted around 6.6 million foreign tourists in 2018, which represented a significant decline since the 1970s when the country received unprecedented numbers of foreign tourists due to the popular hippie trail. The trail attracted thousands of Europeans and Americans in the 1960s and 1970s who traveled via land through Turkey and Iran into India through Pakistan. The main destinations of choice for these tourists were the Khyber Pass, Peshawar, Karachi, Lahore, Swat, and Rawalpindi. The numbers following the trail declined after the Iranian Revolution, and the Soviet-Afghan War. Pakistan's tourist attractions range from the mangroves in the south to the Himalayan hill stations in the northeast. The country's tourist destinations range from the Buddhist ruins of Taktibahi and Taksila, to the 5,000-year-old cities of the Indus Valley civilization such as Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. Pakistan is home to several mountain peaks over 7,000 meters. The northern part of Pakistan has many old fortresses, examples of ancient architecture, and the Hunza and Chitral valleys, home to the small pre-Islamic Kalasha community claiming descent from Alexander the Great. Pakistan's cultural capital, Lahore, contains many examples of Mughal architecture such as the Badshahi Masjid, the Shalimar Gardens, the Tomb of Yahangir, and the Lahore Fort. In October 2006, just one year after the 2005 Kashmir earthquake, The Guardian released what it described as the top five tourist sites in Pakistan in order to help the country's tourism industry. The five sites included Taksila, Lahore, the Karakoram Highway, Karimabad, and Lake Saiful Muluk. To promote Pakistan's unique cultural heritage, the government organizes various festivals throughout the year. In 2015, the World Economic Forum's Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Report ranked Pakistan 125 out of 141 countries. Chapter 8 – Infrastructure Pakistan was recognized as the best country for infrastructure development in South Asia during the IWF and World Bank annual meetings in 2016. Chapter 8 Section 1 – Nuclear Power and Energy As of May 2021, nuclear power is provided by six licensed commercial nuclear power plants. The Pakistan Atomic Energy Commission is solely responsible for operating these power plants, while the Pakistan Nuclear Regulatory Authority regulates safe usage of the nuclear energy. The electricity generated by commercial nuclear power plants constitutes roughly 5.8% of Pakistan's electrical energy, compared to 64.2% from fossil fuels, 29.9% from hydroelectric power, and 0.1% from coal. Pakistan is one of the four nuclear-armed states that is not a party to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, 
but it is a member in good standing of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The Canop I, a candid type nuclear reactor, was supplied by Canada in 1971, the country's first commercial nuclear power plant. The Sino Pakistani nuclear cooperation began in the early 1980s. After a Sino Pakistani nuclear cooperation agreement in 1986, China provided Pakistan with a nuclear reactor dubbed Chesnapai for energy and the industrial growth of the country. In 2005, both countries proposed working on a joint energy security plan, calling for a huge increase in generation capacity to more than 160,000 MW by 2030. Under its Nuclear Energy Vision 2050, the Pakistani government plans to increase nuclear power generation capacity to 40,000 MW, 8,900 MW of it by 2030. In June 2008 the nuclear commercial complex was expanded with the groundwork of installing and operationalizing the Chashma 3 and Chashma 4 reactors at Chashma, Punjab province, each with 325 to 340 MWA and costing Rs 129 billion, from which the Rs 80 billion came from international sources, principally China. A further agreement for China's help with the project was signed in October 2008, and given prominence as a counter to the US-India agreement that shortly preceded it. The cost quoted then was 1.7 billion US dollars, with a foreign loan component of 1.07 billion US dollars. In 2013 Pakistan established a second commercial nuclear complex in Karachi with plans of additional reactors, similar to the one in Chashma. The electrical energy is generated by various energy corporations and evenly distributed by the National Electric Power Regulatory Authority among the four provinces. However, the Karachi-based K-Electric and the Water and Power Development Authority generates much of the electrical energy used in Pakistan in addition to gathering revenue nationwide. In 2014, Pakistan had an installed electricity generation capacity of 22,797 MWT. Chapter 8 Section 2 – Transport The transport industry accounts for tilde 10.5% of the nation's GDP. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 2 Motorways Motorways of Pakistan are a network of multiple lane, high-speed, controlled access highways in Pakistan, which are owned, maintained, and operated federally by Pakistan's National Highway Authority. As of 20 February 2020, 1,882 kilometers of motorways are operational, while an additional 1,854 kilometers are under construction or planned. All motorways in Pakistan are prefixed with the letter M followed by the unique numerical designation of the specific highway, for example M1. Pakistan's motorways are an important part of Pakistan's National Trade Corridor project, which aims to link Pakistan's three Arabian Sea ports to the rest of the country through its national highways and motorways network and further north with Afghanistan, Central Asia, and China. The project was planned in 1990. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor project aims to link Gwadar Port and Koshgar using Pakistani motorways, national highways, and expressways. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 3 Highways Highways form the backbone of Pakistan's transport system, a total road length of 263,942 km accounts for 92% of passengers and 96% of inland freight traffic. Road transport services are largely in the hands of the private sector. The National Highway Authority is responsible for the maintenance of national highways and motorways. The highway and motorway system depends mainly on north-south links connecting the southern ports to the populous provinces of Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Although this network only accounts for 4.6% of total road length, it carries 85% of the country's traffic. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 4 Railways the Pakistan Railways, under the Ministry of Railways operates the railroad system. From 1947 until the 1970s the train system, 
was the primary means of transport until the nationwide constructions of the national highways and the economic boom of the automotive industry. Beginning in the 1990s there was a marked shift in traffic from rail to highways, dependence grew on roads after the introduction of vehicles in the country. Now the railway's share of inland traffic is below 8% for passengers and 4% for freight traffic. As personal transportation began to be dominated by the automobile, total rail track decreased from 8,775 km in 1990 91 to 7,791 km in 2011. Pakistan expects to use the rail service to boost foreign trade with China, Iran, and Turkey. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 5 Airports There are an estimated 151 airports and airfields in Pakistan as of 2013, including both the military and the mostly publicly owned civilian airports. Although Jinnah International Airport is the principal international gateway to Pakistan, the international airports in Lahore, Islamabad, Peshawar, Quetta, Faisalabad, Sialkot, and Multan also handle significant amounts of traffic. The civil aviation industry is mixed with public and private sectors, which was deregulated in 1993. While the state-owned Pakistan International Airlines is the major and dominant air carrier that carries about 73% of domestic passengers and all domestic freight, the private airlines such as Air Blue and Air Indus, also provide similar services at a low cost. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 6 Seaports Major seaports are in Karachi, Sindh? Since the 1990s some seaport operations have been moved to Balochistan with the construction of Gwadar Port, Port of Pasni and Gadani Port. Gwadar Port is the deepest seaport of the world. According to the WEF's Global Competitiveness Report, Quality ratings of Pakistan's port infrastructure increased from 3.7 to 4.1 between 2000 and 7 and 2016. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 7 Metro Equals Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 8 Metro Train Equals The Orange Line Metro Train is an automated rapid transit system in Lahore. The Orange Line is the first of the three proposed rail lines part for the Lahore Metro. The line spans 27.1 km with 25.4 km elevated and 1.72 km underground and has a cost of 251.06 billion rupees. The line consists of 26 subway stations and is designed to carry over 250,000 passengers daily. The line became operational on the 25th of October 2020. Equals Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 9 Metro Bus and BRT Apostrophe S Equals Lahore Metro Bus is a bus rapid transit service operating in the city of Lahore. The Metro Bus Network's first phase was opened in February 2013. It was the first Metro Bus system in Pakistan. Rawalpindi Islamabad Metrobus is a 22.5 km bus rapid transit system operating in the Islamabad Rawalpindi metropolitan area. The Metrobus network's first phase was opened on 4 June 2015, and stretches 22 km between Pak Secretariat, in Islamabad, and Sada in Rawalpindi. The system uses e-ticketing and an intelligent transportation system, and is managed by the Punjab Mass Transit Authority. Multan Metro Bus is a bus rapid transit system in Multan. Construction on the line began in May 2015, while operations commenced on 24 January 2017. Peshawar Bus Rapid Transit is a bus rapid transit system in Peshawar, capital of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa Province. The construction of the project was started in October 2017 and was inaugurated on 13 August 2020, it is the fourth BRT system in Pakistan. Green Line Metrobus is the first phase of Karachi Metrobus that has been operational since 25 December 2021. The government of Pakistan financed the majority of the project. Construction of the Green Line began on 26 February 2016. 
Faisalabad Shuttle Train Service and Faisalabad Metrobus are the proposed rapid transit projects in the city of Faisalabad. These projects are the part of a mega project of China Pakistan Economic Corridor. Equals Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 10 Other Systems Equals Karachi Circular Railway is a partially active regional public transit system in Karachi, which serves the Karachi metropolitan area. KCR was fully operational between 1969 and 1999. Since 2001, restoration of the railway and restarting the system had been sought. In November 2020, the KCR partially revived operations. A tramway service service was started in 1884 in Karachi but was closed in 1975 due to various factors. The Sindh government is planning to restart the tramway services in the city, collaborating with Austrian experts. In October 2019, a project for the construction of tramway service in Lahore has also been signed by the Punjab government. This project will be launched under public-private partnership in a joint venture of European and Chinese companies along with the Punjab Transport Department. Chapter 8 Section 2 Subsection 11 Flyovers and Underpasses Many flyovers and underpasses are located in major urban areas of the country to segregate the flow of traffic. The highest number of flyovers and underpasses are located in Karachi, followed by Lahore. Other cities having flyovers and underpasses for the regulation of flow of traffic includes Islamabad Rawalpindi, Faisalabad, Gujranwala, Multan, Peshawar, Hyderabad, Quetta, Sargoda, Bahawalpur, Sukur, Larkana, Rahim Yarkhan and Sahiwal etc. Beijing underpass, Lahore is the longest underpass of Pakistan with a length of about 1.3 km. Muslim Town Flyover, Lahore is the longest flyover of the country with a length of about 2.6 km. Chapter 8 Section 3, Science and Technology Developments in science and technology have played an important role in Pakistan's infrastructure and helped the country connect to the rest of the world. Every year, scientists from around the world are invited by the Pakistan Academy of Sciences and the Pakistan government to participate in the International Nathayagali Summer College on Physics. Pakistan hosted an international seminar on physics in developing countries for the International Year of Physics 2005. The Pakistani theoretical physicist Abdus Salam won a Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on the electroweak interaction. Influential publications and critical scientific work in the advancement of mathematics, biology, economics, computer science, and genetics have been produced by Pakistani scientists at both the domestic and international levels. In chemistry, Salim Azaman Siddiqui was the first Pakistani scientist to bring the therapeutic constituents of the neem tree to the attention of natural products chemists. Pakistani neurosurgeon Ayub Omaya invented the Omaya Reservoir, a system for treatment of brain tumors and other brain conditions. Scientific research and development play a pivotal role in Pakistani universities, government-sponsored national laboratories, science parks, and the industry. Abdul Qadir Khan, regarded as the founder of the HOHO-based gas centrifuge uranium enrichment program for Pakistan's integrated atomic bomb project. He founded and established the Carter Research Laboratories in 1976, serving as both its senior scientist and the director general until his retirement in 2001, and he was an early and vital figure in other science projects. Apart from participating in Pakistan's atomic bomb project, he made major contributions in molecular morphology, physical martensite, and its integrated applications in condensed and material physics. In 2010, Pakistan was ranked 43rd in the world in terms of published scientific papers. The Pakistan Academy of Sciences, a strong scientific community, plays an influential and vital role in formulating recommendations regarding science policies for the government. Pakistan was ranked 107th in the Global Innovation Index in 2020, down from 105th in 2019. The 1960s saw the emergence of an active space program led by Supaco that produced advances in domestic rocketry, electronics, and aeronomy. 
the space program recorded a few notable feats and achievements. The successful launch of its first rocket into space made Pakistan the first South Asian country to have achieved such a task. Successfully producing and launching the nation's first space satellite in 1990, Pakistan became the first Muslim country and second South Asian country to put a satellite into space. As an aftermath of the 1971 war with India, the clandestine crash program developed atomic weapons partly motivated by fear and to prevent any foreign intervention, while ushering in the atomic age in the post Cold War era. Competition with India and tensions eventually led to Pakistan's decision to conduct underground nuclear tests in 1998 thus becoming the seventh country in the world to successfully develop nuclear weapons. Pakistan is the first and only Muslim country that maintains an active research presence in Antarctica. Since 1991 Pakistan has maintained two summer research stations and one weather observatory on the continent and plans to open another full-fledged permanent base in Antarctica. Energy consumption by computers and usage has grown since the 1990s when PCs were introduced. Pakistan has about 82 million internet users and is ranked as one of the top countries that have registered a high growth rate in internet penetration as of 2020. Key publications have been produced by Pakistan, and domestic software development has gained considerable international praise. As of May 2020, Pakistan has about 82 million internet users, making it the ninth largest population of internet users in the world. Since the 2000s Pakistan has made a significant amount of progress in supercomputing, and various institutions offer research opportunities in parallel computing. The Pakistan government reportedly spends Rs 4.6 billion on information technology projects, with emphasis on e-government, human resources, and infrastructure development. Chapter 8 Section 4 – Education the Constitution of Pakistan requires the state to provide free primary and secondary education. At the time of the establishment of Pakistan as a state, the country had only one university, Punjab University in Lahore. Very soon the Pakistan government established public universities in each of the four provinces, including Sindh University, Peshawar University, Karachi University, and Balochistan University. Pakistan has a large network of both public and private universities, which includes collaboration between the universities aimed at providing research and higher education opportunities in the country, although there is concern about the low quality of teaching in many of the newer schools. It is estimated that there are 3,193 technical and vocational institutions in Pakistan, and there are also madrasas that provide free Islamic education and offer free board and lodging to students, who come mainly from the poorer strata of society. Strong public pressure and popular criticism over extremists' usage of madrasas for recruitment, the Pakistan government has made repeated efforts to regulate and monitor the quality of education in the madrasas. Education in Pakistan is divided into six main levels, nursery, primary, middle, matriculation, intermediate, and university programs leading to graduate and postgraduate degrees. There is a network of private schools that constitutes a parallel secondary education system based on a curriculum set and administered by the Cambridge International Examinations of the United Kingdom. Some students choose to take the O-level and A-level exams conducted by the British Council. According to the International Schools Consultancy, Pakistan has 439 international schools. As a result of initiatives taken in 2007, the English medium education has been made compulsory in all schools across the country. In 2012, Malala Yousafzai, a campaigner for female education, was shot by a Taliban gunman in retaliation for her activism. Yousafzai went on to become the youngest ever Nobel laureate for her global education-related advocacy. Additional reforms enacted in 2013 required all educational institutions in Sindh to begin offering Chinese language courses, reflecting China's growing role as a superpower and its increasing influence in Pakistan. The literacy rate of the population is 62.3%, as of 2018. The rate of male literacy is 72.5% while the rate of female literacy is 51.8%. 
Literacy rates vary by region and particularly by sex, as one example, in tribal areas female literacy is 9.5%, while Azad Jammu and Kashmir has a literacy rate of 74%. With the advent of computer literacy in 1995, the government launched a nationwide initiative in 1998 with the aim of eradicating illiteracy and providing a basic education to all children. Through various educational reforms, by 2015 the Ministry of Education expected to attain 100% enrollment levels among children of primary school age and a literacy rate of tilde 86% among people aged over 10. Pakistan is currently spending 2.3% of its GDP on education, which according to the Institute of Social and Policy Sciences is one of the lowest in South Asia. Chapter 9 Demographics As of 2020, Pakistan is the fifth most populous country in the world and accounts for about 2.8% of the world population. The 2017 census of Pakistan provisionally estimated the population to be 207.8 million. This figure excludes data from Gilgit Baltistan and Azad Kashmir, which is likely to be included in the final report. The population in 2017 represents a 57% increase from 1998. The annual growth rate in 2016 was reported to be 1.45%, which is the highest of the Zark nations, though the growth rate has been decreasing in recent years. The population is projected to reach 263 million by 2030. At the time of the partition in 1947, Pakistan had a population of 32.5 million, the population increased by tilde 57.2% between the years 1990 and 2009. By 2030 Pakistan is expected to surpass Indonesia as the largest Muslim-majority country in the world. Pakistan is classified as a young nation, with a median age of 23.4 in 2016, about 104 million people were under the age of 30 in 2010. In 2016 Pakistan's fertility rate was estimated to be 2.68, higher than its neighbor India. Around 35% of the people are under 15. The vast majority of those residing in southern Pakistan live along the Indus River, with Karachi being the most populous commercial city in the south. In eastern, western, and northern Pakistan, most of the population lives in an arc formed by the cities of Lahore, Faisalabad, Rawalpindi, Sagoda, Islamabad, Gujranwala, Sialkot, Gujarat, Jhelum, Shehupura, Naushera, Mardan, and Peshawar. During 1990-2008, city dwellers made up 36% of Pakistan's population, making it the most urbanized nation in South Asia, which increased to 38% by 2013. Furthermore, 50% of Pakistanis live in towns of 5,000 people or more. Expenditure on healthcare was tilde 2.8% of GDP in 2013. Life expectancy at birth was 67 years for females and 65 years for males in 2013. The private sector accounts for about 80% of outpatient visits. Approximately 19% of the population and 30% of children under 5 are malnourished. Mortality of the under fives was 86 per 1,000 live births in 2012. Chapter 9 Section 1, Languages More than 60 languages are spoken in Pakistan, including a number of provincial languages. Urdu, the lingua franca, and a symbol of Muslim identity and national unity, is the national language and understood by over 75% of Pakistanis. It is the main medium of communication in the country, but the primary language of only 7% of the population. Urdu and English are the official languages of Pakistan. English is primarily used in official business and government, and in legal contracts, the local variety is known as Pakistani English. Punjabi, the most common language and the first language of 38.78% of the population, is mostly spoken in the Punjab. Sariki is mainly spoken in South Punjab, and Hindko is predominant in the Hazara region of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Pashto is the provincial language of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. Sindhi is commonly spoken in Sindh, while Balochi is dominant in Balochistan. Brawi, 
a Dravidian language, is spoken by the Brawi people who live in Balochistan. There are also speakers of Gujarati in Karachi. Mirwari, a Rajasthani language, is also spoken in parts of Sindh. Various languages such as Shinor, Balti, and Burushaski are spoken in Gilgit Baltistan, whilst languages such as Pahari, Gojri, and Kashmiri are spoken by many in Azad Kashmir. Arabic is officially recognized by the Constitution of Pakistan. It declares in Article 31 No. 2 that the state shall endeavor, as respects the Muslims of Pakistan to make the teaching of the Holy Quran and Islamiyat compulsory, to encourage and facilitate the learning of Arabic language. Chapter 9 Section 2 Immigration Even after partition in 1947, Indian Muslims continued to migrate to Pakistan throughout the 1950s and 1960s, and these migrants settled mainly in Karachi and other towns of Sindh province. The wars in neighboring Afghanistan during the 1980s and 1990s also forced millions of Afghan refugees into Pakistan. The Pakistan census excludes the 1.41 million registered refugees from Afghanistan, who are found mainly in the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and tribal belt, with small numbers residing in Karachi and Quetta. Pakistan is home to one of the world's largest refugee populations. In addition to Afghans, around 2 million Bangladeshis and half a million other undocumented people live in Pakistan. They are claimed to be from other areas such as Myanmar, Iran, Iraq, and Africa. Experts say that the migration of both Bengalis and Burmese to Pakistan started in the 1980s and continued until 1998. Sheikh Mohammed Faroz, the chairman of the Pakistani Bengali Action Committee, claims that there are 200 settlements of Bengali speaking people in Pakistan, of which 132 are in Karachi. They are also found in various other areas of Pakistan such as Thatta, Badin, Hyderabad, Tando Adam, and Lahore. Large-scale Rohingya migration to Karachi made that city one of the largest population centers of Rohingyas in the world after Myanmar. The Burmese community of Karachi is spread out over 60 of the city's slums such as the Burmi colony in Karangi, Arakanabad, Mushka colony, Bilal colony, Zeolhar colony, and Godra camp. Thousands of Uyghur Muslims have also migrated to the Gilgit Baltistan region of Pakistan, fleeing religious and cultural persecution in Xinjiang, China. Since 1989, thousands of Kashmiri Muslim refugees have sought refuge in Pakistan, complaining that many of the refugee women had been raped by Indian soldiers and that they were forced out of their homes by the soldiers. Chapter 9, Section 3 Ethnic Groups the major ethnic groups are Punjabis, Pashtuns, also known as Pathans, Sinis, Saraikis, Mahajirs, who make up 7.6% of the population, and the Balak with 3.6%. The remaining 6.3% consist of a number of ethnic minorities such as the Brawis, the Hindkauans, the various peoples of Gilgit Baltistan, the Kashmiris, the Shidis, and the Hazaros. There is also a large Pakistani diaspora worldwide, numbering over 7 million, which has been recorded as the sixth largest diaspora in the world. Chapter 9 Section 4 Urbanization Since achieving independence as a result of the partition of India, the urbanization has increased exponentially, with several different causes. The majority of the population in the south resides along the Indus River, with Karachi the most populous commercial city. In the east, west, and north, most of the population lives in an arc formed by the cities of Lahore, Faisalabad, Rawalpindi, Islamabad, Sargoda, Gujranwala, Sialkot, Gujrat, Jhelum, Shehupura, Naushera, Mardan, and Peshawar. During the period 1990-2008, City dwellers made up 36% of Pakistan's population, making it the most urbanized nation in South Asia. Furthermore, more than 50% of Pakistanis live in towns of 5,000 people or more. Immigration, from both within and outside the country, is regarded as one of the main factors contributing to urbanization in Pakistan. One analysis of the 1998 national census highlighted the significance of the partition of India, 
in the 1940s as it relates to urban change in Pakistan. During and after the independence period, Urdu-speaking Muslims from India migrated in large numbers to Pakistan, especially to the port city of Karachi, which is today the largest metropolis in Pakistan. Migration from other countries, mainly from those nearby, has further accelerated the process of urbanization in Pakistani cities. Inevitably, the rapid urbanization caused by these large population movements has also created new political and socio-economic challenges. In addition to immigration, economic trends such as the Green Revolution and political developments, among a host of other factors, are also important causes of urbanization. Chapter 9 Section 5 Religion The state religion in Pakistan is Islam. Freedom of religion is guaranteed by the Constitution of Pakistan, which provides all its citizens the right to profess, practice and propagate their religion subject to law, public order, and morality. The majority of Pakistanis are Muslims followed by Hindus and Christians. There are also people in Pakistan who follow other religions, such as Sikhism, Buddhism, Jainism and the minority of Parsi. The Kalash people maintain a unique identity and religion within Pakistan. Hinduism is mostly associated with Sinis, and Pakistan hosts major events such as the Hinglaj Yatra pilgrimage. Hindu temples may be found throughout Sindh, where the Dharma features prominently. Many Hindus in Pakistan complain about the prospect of religious violence against them and being treated like second class citizens, and many have emigrated to India or further abroad. In addition, some Pakistanis also do not profess any faith in Pakistan. According to the 1998 census, people who did not state their religion accounted for half a percent of the population. Chapter 9 Section 5 Subsection 2 Islam Islam is the dominant religion. About 96.47% of Pakistanis are Muslim, according to the 2017 census. Pakistan has the second largest number of Muslims in the world after Indonesia. And home for of the world's Muslim population. The majority of them are Sunni and mostly follow Sufism while Shias represent between 5 to 25%. In 2019, the Shia population in Pakistan was estimated to be 42 million out of total population of 210 million. Pakistan also has the largest Muslim city in the world. The Ahmadis, a small minority representing 0.22 to 2% of Pakistan's population, are officially considered non-Muslims by virtue of the constitutional amendment. The Ahmadis are particularly persecuted, especially since 1974 when they were banned from calling themselves Muslims. In 1984, Ahmadiyya places of worship were banned from being called mosques. As of 2012, 12% of Pakistani Muslims self-identify as non-denominational Muslims. There are also several Quraniyun communities. They are mainly concentrated in the Laili and Tzal, Chinyat district, where approximately 13% of the population. Sufism, a mystical Islamic tradition, has a long history and a large following among the Sunni Muslims in Pakistan, at both the academic and popular levels. Popular Sufi culture is centered around gatherings and celebrations at the shrines of saints and annual festivals that feature Sufi music and dance. Two Sufis, whose shrines receive much national attention are Ali Hajwari in Lahore and Shabazz Kalunder in Swan, Sindh. There are two levels of Sufism in Pakistan. The first is the populist Sufism of the rural population. This level of Sufism involves belief in intercession through saints, veneration of their shrines and forming bonds with a pur. Many rural Pakistani Muslims associate with Pierce and seek their intercession. The second level of Sufism in Pakistan is intellectual Sufism, which is growing among the urban and educated population. They are influenced by the writings of Sufis such as the medieval theologian Al-Ghazali, the Sufi reformer Sheikh Ahmad Sir Hindi, and Shah Wali Allah. Contemporary Islamic fundamentalists criticize Sufism's popular character, which in their view does not accurately reflect the teachings and practice of Muhammad and his companions. 
Chapter 9 Section 5 Subsection 3 Hinduism Hinduism is the second largest religion in Pakistan after Islam and is followed by 2.14% of the population according to the 2017 census. According to the 2010 Pew Report, Pakistan had the fifth largest Hindu population in the world. In the 2017 census, the Hindu population was found to be 4,444,437. Hindus are found in all provinces of Pakistan but are mostly concentrated in Sindh, where they account for 8.73% of the population. Amarkot district is the only Hindu majority district in Pakistan. Thapakar district has the highest population of Hindus in terms of absolute terms. The four districts in Sindh are Murkot, Thapakar, Murpurkas and Sangha hosts more than half of the Hindu population in Pakistan. At the time of Pakistan's creation, the hostage theory gained currency. According to this theory, the Hindu minority in Pakistan was to be given a fair deal in Pakistan in order to ensure the protection of the Muslim minority in India. However, Kawaja Nazimuddin, the second Prime Minister of Pakistan, stated I do not agree that religion is a private affair of the individual nor do I agree that in an Islamic state every citizen has identical rights, no matter what his caste, creed or faith be. Some Hindus in Pakistan feel that they are treated as second-class citizens and many have continued to migrate to India. Pakistani Hindus faced riots after the Babri Masjid demolition and have experienced other attacks, forced conversions, and abductions. Chapter 9 Section 5 Subsection 4 Christianity and Other Religions Christians formed the next largest religious minority after Hindus, with 1.27% of the population following it. The highest concentration of Christians in Pakistan is in Lahore district in Punjab province and in Islamabad capital territory. There is a Roman Catholic community in Karachi that was established by Goan and Tamil migrants when Karachi's infrastructure was being developed by the British during the colonial administration between World War I and World War II. They are followed by the Baha'i faith, which had a following of 30,000, then Sikhism, Buddhism, and Zoroastrianism, each back then claiming 20,000 adherents, and a very small community of Jains. 1.0% of the population identified as atheist in 2005. However, the figure rose to 2.0% in 2012 according to Gallup. Chapter 10, Culture and Society Civil society in Pakistan is largely hierarchical, emphasizing local cultural etiquette and traditional Islamic values that govern personal and political life. The basic family unit is the extended family, although for socio-economic reasons there has been a growing trend towards nuclear families. The traditional dress for both men and women is the shalwar kameez, trousers, jeans, and shirts are also popular among men. In recent decades, the middle class has increased to around 35 million, and the upper and upper middle classes to around 17 million, and power is shifting from rural landowners to the urbanized elites. Pakistani festivals, including Eid ul Fitr, Eid ul Azha, Ramazan, Christmas, Easter, Holi, and Diwali, are mostly religious in origin. Increasing globalization has resulted in Pakistan ranking 56th on the AT Khani slash FP Globalization Index. Chapter 10, Section 1 Clothing, Arts, and Fashion. The shalwar kameez is the national dress of Pakistan and is worn by both men and women in all four provinces Punjab, Sindh, Balochistan, and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, and Azad Kashmir. Each province has its own style of shalwar kameez. Pakistanis wear clothes in a range of exquisite colors and designs and in type of fabric. Besides the national dress, domestically tailored suits and neckties are often worn by men, and are customary in offices, schools, and social gatherings. The fashion industry has flourished in the changing environment of the fashion world. Since Pakistan came into being, its fashion has evolved in different phases and developed a unique identity. Today, Pakistani fashion is a combination of traditional and modern dress, 
and has become a mark of Pakistani culture. Despite modern trends, regional and traditional forms of dress have developed their own significance as a symbol of native tradition. This regional fashion continues to evolve into both more modern and purer forms. The Pakistan Fashion Design Council based in Lahore organizes PFTC Fashion Week, and the Fashion Pakistan Council based in Karachi organizes Fashion Pakistan Week. Pakistan's first Fashion Week was held in November 2009. Chapter 10 Section 2 – Media and Entertainment The private print media, state-owned Pakistan Television Corporation, and Pakistan Broadcasting Corporation for Radio were the dominant media outlets until the beginning of the 21st century. Pakistan now has a large network of domestic, privately owned 24-hour news media, and television channels. A 2016 report by the Reporters Without Borders ranked Pakistan 147th on the Press Freedom Index, while at the same time terming the Pakistani media, among the freest in Asia when it comes to covering the squabbling among politicians. The BBC terms the Pakistani media among the most outspoken in South Asia. Pakistani media has also played a vital role in exposing corruption. The Lollywood, Currywood, Punjabi and Pashto film industry is based in Karachi, Lahore, and Peshawar. While Bollywood films were banned from public cinemas from 1965 until 2008, they have remained an important part of popular culture. In contrast to the ailing Pakistani film industry, Urdu televised dramas and theatrical performances continue to be popular, as many entertainment media outlets air them regularly. Urdu dramas dominate the television entertainment industry, which has launched critically acclaimed miniseries and featured popular actors and actresses since the 1990s. In the 1960s 1970s, pop music and disco dominated the country's music industry. In the 1980s 1990s, British influenced rock music appeared and jolted the country's entertainment industry. In the 2000s, heavy metal music gained popular and critical acclaim. Pakistani music ranges from diverse forms of provincial folk music and traditional styles, such as Kawali and Ghazal Gayoki, to modern musical forms that fuse traditional and Western music. Pakistan has many famous folk singers. The arrival of Afghan refugees in the Western provinces has stimulated interest in Pashto music, although there has been intolerance of it in some places. Chapter 10 Section 3 – Diaspora According to the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Pakistan has the sixth largest diaspora in the world. Statistics gathered by the Pakistani government show that there are around 7 million Pakistanis residing abroad, with the vast majority living in the Middle East, Europe, and North America. Pakistan ranks 10th in the world for remittances sent home. The largest inflow of remittances, as of 2016, is from Saudi Arabia, amounting to $5.9 billion. The term overseas Pakistani, is officially recognized by the government of Pakistan. The Ministry of Overseas Pakistanis was established in 2008 to deal exclusively with all matters of overseas Pakistanis such as attending to their needs and problems, developing projects for their welfare, and working for resolution of their problems and issues. Overseas Pakistanis are the second largest source of foreign exchange remittances to Pakistan after exports. Over the last several years, Home remittances have maintained a steadily rising trend, with a more than 100% increase from 8.9 billion US dollars in 2009 10 to 19.9 billion US dollars in 2015 to 16. The Overseas Pakistani Division was created in September 2004 within the Ministry of Labor. It has since recognized the importance of overseas Pakistanis and their contribution to the nation's economy. Together with Community Welfare Attaches and the Overseas Pakistanis Foundation, the OPD is making efforts to improve the welfare of Pakistanis who reside abroad. The division aims to provide better services through improved facilities at airports, and suitable schemes for housing, education, and health care. It also facilitates the reintegration into society of returning overseas Pakistanis. 
Notable members of the Pakistani diaspora include the London Mayor Sadiq Khan, the UK Cabinet member Sajid Javid, the former UK Conservative Party Chair Baroness Wasi, the singers Zain Malik and Nadia Ali, MIT physics professor Dr. Nergis Movalvala, the actors Riz Ahmed and Kumail Nanjani, the businessman Shahid Khan and Sir Anwar Pervez, Boston University professors Ardil Nodyom and Hamid Nawab, Texas A&M professor Mohammed Suhail Zubairi, Yale professor Sarah Soleri, UC. San Diego professor Farouk Azam and the historian Aisha Jalal. Chapter 10 Section 4, Literature and Philosophy Pakistan has literature in Urdu, Sindhi, Punjabi, Pashto, Baluchi, Persian, English, and many other languages. The Pakistan Academy of Letters is a large literary community that promotes literature and poetry in Pakistan and abroad. The National Library publishes and promotes literature in the country. Before the 19th century, Pakistani literature consisted mainly of lyric and religious poetry and mystical and folkloric works. During the colonial period, native literary figures were influenced by Western literary realism, and took up increasingly varied topics and narrative forms. Prose fiction is now very popular. The national poet of Pakistan, Muhammad Iqbal, wrote poetry in Urdu and Persian. He was a strong proponent of the political and spiritual revival of Islamic civilization and encouraged Muslims all over the world to bring about a successful revolution. Well-known figures in contemporary Pakistani Urdu literature include Josh Mali Harbadi Fais Ahmed Fais and Sardat Hassan Manto. Sadiqain and Gulji are known for their calligraphy and paintings. The Sufi poets Shah Abdul Latif, Bilay Shah, Mayan Muhammad Baksh, and Kawaja Farid enjoy considerable popularity in Pakistan. Mirza Khalik Beg has been termed the father of modern Sindhi prose. Historically, Philosophical development in the country was dominated by Muhammad Iqbal, Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, Muhammad Assad, Maududi, and Muhammad Ali Johar. Ideas from British and American philosophy greatly shaped philosophical development in Pakistan. Analysts such as M. M. Sharif and Zafar Hassan established the first major Pakistani philosophical movement in 1947. After the 1971 war, Philosophers such as Jalaluddin Abdur Rahim, Jianchan Daini, and Malik Khalid incorporated Marxism into Pakistan's philosophical thinking. Influential work by Manzor Ahmad, John Elia, Hassan Askari Rizvi, and Abdul Khalik brought mainstream social, political, and analytical philosophy to the fore in academia. Works by Noam Chomsky have influenced philosophical ideas in various fields of social and political philosophy. Chapter 10 Section 5, Architecture Four periods are recognized in Pakistani architecture, pre-Islamic, Islamic, colonial, and post-colonial. With the beginning of the Indus civilization around the middle of the 3rd millennium BCE, an advanced urban culture developed for the first time in the region, with large buildings, some of which survive to this day. Mohenjo Daro, Harappa, and Kot Digi are among the pre-Islamic settlements that are now tourist attractions. The rise of Buddhism and the influence of Greek civilization led to the development of a Greco-Buddhist style, starting from the 1st century CE. The high point of this era was the Gandhara style. An example of Buddhist architecture is the ruins of the Buddhist monastery Taktai Bahi in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. The arrival of Islam in what is today Pakistan meant the sudden end of Buddhist architecture in the area, and a smooth transition to the predominantly pictureless Islamic architecture. The most important Indo Islamic style building still standing is the tomb of the Shah Rukhnai Alam in Multan. During the Mughal era, Design elements of Persian Islamic architecture were fused with and often produced playful forms of Hindustani art. Lahore, as the occasional residence of Mughal rulers, contains many important buildings from the empire. Most prominent among them are the Bad Shahi Mosque, the fortress of Lahore with the famous Alamjiri Gate, the colorful, Mughal style Wazir Khan Mosque, the Shalimar Gardens in Lahore, and the Shah Jahan Mosque in Thatta. In the British colonial period, 
predominantly functional buildings of the Indo-European representative style developed from a mixture of European and Indian Islamic components. Post-colonial national identity is expressed in modern structures such as the Faisal Mosque, the Minar-e Pakistan, and the Mazar-e Quaid. Several examples of architectural infrastructure demonstrating the influence of British design can be found in Lahore, Peshawar, and Karachi. Chapter 10 Section 6, Food and Drink Chapter 10 Section 6 Subsection 2 Traditional Food Pakistani cuisine is similar to that of other regions of South Asia, with some of it being originated from the royal kitchens of 16th century Mughal emperors. Most of those dishes have their roots in British, Indian, Central Asian and Middle Eastern cuisine. Unlike Middle Eastern cuisine, Pakistani cooking uses large quantities of spices, herbs, and seasoning. Garlic, ginger, turmeric, red chili, and garam masala are used in most dishes, and home cooking regularly includes curry, roti, a thin flatbread made from wheat, is a staple food, usually served with curry, meat, vegetables, and lentils. Rice is also common, it is served plain, fried with spices, and in sweet dishes. Lossi is a traditional drink in the Punjab region. Black tea with milk and sugar is popular throughout Pakistan and is consumed daily by most of the population. Soan halwa is a popular sweet dish from the southern region of Punjab province, and is enjoyed all over Pakistan. Chapter 10 Section 7, Sports Most sports played in Pakistan originated and were substantially developed by athletes and sports fans from the United Kingdom, who introduced them during the British Raj. Field hockey is the national sport of Pakistan, it has won three gold medals in the Olympic Games held in 1960, 1968, and 1984. Pakistan has also won the Hockey World Cup a record four times, held in 1971, 1978, 1982, and 1994. Cricket, however, is the most popular game across the country. The country has had an array of success in the sport over the years, and has the distinct achievement of having won each of the major ICC international cricket tournaments, ICC Cricket World Cup, ICC World 2020, and ICC Champions Trophy, as well as the ICC Test Championship. The cricket team won the Cricket World Cup held in 1992, it was runner-up once, in 1999. Pakistan was runner-up in the inaugural World, 2020 in South Africa, and won the World 2020 in England in 2009. In March 2009, militants attacked the touring Sri Lankan cricket team, after which no international cricket was played in Pakistan until May 2015, when the Zimbabwean team agreed to a tour. Pakistan also won the 2017 ICC Champions Trophy by defeating our rivals India in the final. Pakistan Super League is one of the largest cricket leagues of the world with a brand value of about Rs 32.26 billion. Association football is the second most played sports in Pakistan and it is organized and regulated by the Pakistan Football Federation. Football in Pakistan is as old as the country itself. Shortly after the creation of Pakistan in 1947, the Pakistan Football Federation was created, and Muhammad Ali Jinnah became its first patron-in-chief. The highest football division in Pakistan is the Pakistan Premier League. Pakistan is known as one of the best manufacturer of the official FIFA World Cup ball. The best football players to play for Pakistan are Kalimullah, Zesh Rayman, Mohamed Essa, Haroon Yusuf, and Mohamed Adil. Pakistan has hosted or co-hosted several international sporting events, the 1989 and 2004 South Asian Games, the 1984, 1993, 1996 and 2003 World Squash Championships, the 1987 and 1996 Cricket World Cup, and the 1990 Hockey World Cup. Pakistan is set to host the 2023 South Asian Games. Chapter 10 Section 8 Government Official Website Pakistan Public Policies and Researches 
Chapter 10 Section 9, General Information Pakistan The World Factbook Central Intelligence Agency Pakistan from UCB Libraries Gov. Pubs Pakistan at Curly. Pakistan from BBC News Wikimedia Atlas of Pakistan Key Development Forecasts for Pakistan from International Futures Geographic Data Related to Pakistan at OpenStreetMap